Welcome back to Orlando Out of Context. I'm Brian. I'm Stephanie. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. It's been a little while. A little, yeah, not too long, but a little while. It's been a while since we recorded, but we did have an episode Because we went on a recording streak, so we had a few banked yeah. away um, yes. for the past few weeks, and then last week's kind of nice it's kind of nice to have yeah i like that can i kind of like that format (laughs) it's just hard the way scheduling goes and uh, to get that all to magically like line up yeah but it was nice to have them in the can as as one might say i I think where where do you get that i think in the can might be a a more of a production a film term oh you know like you had the can of the film you have it in the can the tin Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> so, welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to talk we about have a lot to cover today. Yeah, we have quite a bit. We always we say that, and then it'll be the twenty minute episode. <laughs> well, we've been doing a lot of things. Like we've been doing all the things. Things have been happening. And yeah. So let me do a breakdown. Stephanie did the show notes today, and she has it segregated. <laughs> so, so because we did things separately as well as together. Yes. So, uh, for a teaser, we're going to talk about Yelp, Yelp's Noche Tropical. Then we're going to talk about Hungry Pants Media Night. Um, we're going to talk a little, little bit about uh, a dilemma I had with my car, and then we're going to talk Hanson and uh, E to the Beat concert series. Also, I wanted to add on one thing. So, if you guys have been listening s- since day one, in episode four, we talked about. I went to a consultation for uh, breast implant surgery, Mm -hmm. and I have a little update about that. Oh, okay. Cool. And then we are going to talk Vampire Ball, uh, which was was cool. And then we're going to talk about Garden Theater, and we're going to talk about the voicemail, which we're going to talk about the voicemail multiple times. So (laughs) we're going to start off by talking about the voicemail. So we have a voicemail, the Orlando Out of Context voicemail. We gave you the number before. Yes, but in case you forgot it. It's 407-603-6994. And if you go to our Instagram, you can hit the contact button and then it pops up there. All I have to do is press call. You don't even have to type it in. No, it's that easy. It's so easy. So the the idea of this is for you to call in. And um, give us a pro tip or ask us a question or ask us our opinion. Or if you see something out in Orlando and you're like, what the hell is that? Why are they doing that? Uh, Call us and let us know. Or if you see something that's really great in Orlando and you want to give props, you call and just, you know, leave a short message. Leave your your name. Say, hey, this is Brian. And uh, here's what I got to say. It you doesn't don't have, have to, to leave long. your real name if you don't want to. No. Just anything. Just your voice. Yeah. Like Ursula. All we want is your voice. <laughs> <laughs> so give us a call. Why don't you? Because nobody's Why called. Why don't you? We sound really desperate. Nobody's yeah. called. Give us a call. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a podcast with our friend uh, uh, Rosie Roman Orlando. Yeah. And we would like to do the whole podcast. Well, not the whole podcast, but most of her episode, we want to dive into these calls together with her. And we'd like to record that fairly soon. So if you could help us out (laughs) (laughs) and give us a call. Please oh, do. For Christ's sake. In fact, this is the first time I'll say you can pause the podcast that you're listening to right now. Go over and call that number and leave us a voicemail. It's 407 603 6994. Call. Call. <laughs> call. Okay. We'll we'll stop beating a dead <laughs> horse, but <laughs> All right. So, listen y'all, I went to Yelp's Noche Tropical tropical i didn't go tropical you didn't go well i didn't know what to expect from this event you had to register for the event so you have to go on uh yelp with your username and submit to be even be allowed to attend correct so i just never submitted because of my work schedule i don't know you know what when where i'll ever be so Next you time, know, you're going to submit no matter what, if you know your schedule or you don't. Yeah, I, I should have done that. I, I don't know why I didn't. So so I wasn't really sure what to expect because this is the first time that I went to this event. But it was at the Orla- Orlando Science Center. 
and Yelp kind of takes over the Science Center um, and they have lots of different restaurants and bars, vendors there with booths set up throughout the museum and they all have sample size. It's like a little taste of Orlando. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's definitely it's like a taste of Orlando. Really cool. I had heard about it because Hungry Pants uh, had put on their stuff somewhere with it. They were going to be there. And I was like, oh, well, let me see this. And so I went and opened my app and saw the the event. And I guess I was lucky enough to get in on the, the guest list. So I arrived. You do have to donate $20, at least $20 to get in. And I would say that's worth it. What did the donation go to? The, the museum? museum? Yeah. So I think they raised over... 20,000 for the museum that night wow. uh, just in the donations uh, that they took at the door so kind of cool kind of cool concept but there was lots of good pl- places and places some places i uh recognize so of course there's hungry pants there was uh susuru was there yeah kelly's ice cream was there uh the new susuru had these uh interesting little like grills they were balls it was like a can of something like i'm guessing the gas yeah and they were cooking on this like little grill listen thing. i didn't get a chance to try it because the line for susuru was probably a 30 minute line oh hell no and i like we can just drive over there and eat in peace. right i <laughs> we could drive over there right now yeah. actually no my, they're closed mondays but uh the line was so long like crazy long so I don't know necessarily what the tip here would be, but because I got there like before seven o'clock because I'm an old man and, you know, I like to get to places early. (laughs) I found me a parking spot, which, listen, I got there probably the event started at seven. I quote unquote seven. I got there at 640 and the parking lot for the, uh, the parking garage for the museum was almost full. I was like, what the hell? Is it a small a garage? it's a decent size i mean it's not super small but it's a decent size and so i don't know exactly what the pro tip here is because i got in before seven o'clock so what time should i arrive next time i did notice that for the yelp elite users or reviewers on yelp they had a special you could get in between six and seven. Oh, probably that's what it was i know but w- See, at what time do they start letting the riffraff in that's why i don't think that i would get approved for an event like this because i am not an active yelp user i think you could get approved L- like listen. i have probably four four reviews on yelp and they're all like 10 paragraphs long chewing some company out listen i don't think you would have had a problem getting in <laughs> okay i'm just saying i'll try it next time yeah you know just go and you ha- i think it's a matter of how early you get uh how early you submit. get your submit submission in so anyway there was lots of great places uh uh oh jeremiah's was there and it was the first time that i ever tried jeremiah's really oh it was so good oh you know what i was thinking of remember the food truck that came to my apartment that was a, some kind yeah, of that's hawaiian ice ish type of yeah that was a different one it, w- it was different yeah but jeremiah's <laughs> you know there's a storefront in hunter's creek yeah i know i've never I just, had it i've just never been there but oh i my wonder gosh. if it's similar to rita's i don't think so because i walked into rita's the other night like last week just to see what rita's was about because you know there's one here at uh, violin point now mm-hmm. i walked in and walked out why i don't well, first of all, it looked like there was only one one person working. Yeah, they run on short staff over there. And there was people in front, like a family in front of me. And I was like... It takes a long time. I've gone a few times with Brian, uh-huh. and uh, it's always some BS going on over there. It's like 10 kids. If anyone gets in front of you, it's like a 20-minute wait. Because yeah. the kids are like, well, so I went to vanilla, the cherry. And then there's only one person working. So Jeremiah's, I had the mint chip. And it's like, has that flavor of ice cream. But then it's like ice. Like, it's just so light and like, ref- not heavy like ice cream. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to keep eating it. <laughs> That's the perfect. So I want to try. I want to try more th- flavors. Yeah, with Jeremiah's. Have you not had Jeremiah's? I've never had it. Nope. Let's go. I still also want the ice cream that they scrape into yeah, the little flowers. Yes. So. I don't know what the the technical term for that is, but I want to try that. There's a place on I Drive now, right? That does that or something. We I don't know that one place we did found. I thought it was over on Kirkman. We did found. We did found. 
Anyway, recommend uh, n- uh, Noche Tropical. I don't know if they call it that every year. And it was year. themed, right? They told you to wear summer yes. wear. So they told you, us to wear like tropical wear. So there was lots of Hawaiian shirts going on. It w- Oh, and the other thing was, is like, oh, this is going to be like, you know, dress down event. This is no big deal. Uh, once again, <laughs> just like we'll talk about it here in the future, uh, later on in the podcast about another event that we <laughs> showed up underdressed to, I felt <laughs> underdressed. I was like, what the, f- what the F? If if you would have told me that theme I w- and I was a man, I would have come in khaki shorts, a loose Hawaiian-ish that, And that's what shirt, I wear in. Maybe a fedora, maybe some boat shoes. And, and called I, it a day. That's how I went. But what were these, the uh, what were the men wearing to these, overdress? Well, sometimes some of them had slacks, coats on, their jackets. Well, that on. ain't beach theme. I mean, but they made it beach like this. Like you would think, oh, these people just came from or work. Or linen, linen pants. These people, you think these people, oh, they just came from work. They, maybe that's what you have in your mind. But no, they went and they dressed to the nines. <laughs> to go to yelp's noche tropical (laughs) i mean and the some of the females were like we are ready to go out (laughs) i was like geez we're just we're just sampling food in a science museum (laughs) this is not a club this is not a party out you know but anyway i recommend it and everyone uh i recommend going because for 20 bucks you could get you could get drunk if you wanted to here so I wonder if you'll... And they were giving away, like, free gifts. Like, uh, Maker's Mark was there. You know, Maker's Mark yeah. is the whiskey that has the... Th- um, the red the drippy w- stuff yes. on the couch. Well, they were doing, like, glasses dipped, and they were dipping in front of people the red on the bottom of the glass as a souvenir to take home. Well, I should have gotten one, but by the time I was passing by, they were all out. Oh, piss. Yeah, so what was the red point? Like, do you leave it on the glass? I guess or? you leave it on the glass. It's just, you know, a Maker's it, Mark wax, thing. Or? It's wax. Yeah. Oh. But it was cool, you know, because it's Maker's Mark is there and doing I wonder things. if you'll get emails about future events now that you've attended this one. Well, I think I'm going to make a habit to just kind of go in there in the app in the events section and just check what the events oh, okay. are. Just, you know, but I might, but uh, I just want to kind of keep on the up and up. Keep on the up and up with the Yelp uh, events section. So we We need to start. <clears throat> we've talked about this a, a while ago, but then we kind of dropped it that we should start actually leaving reviews for all these places that we visit, know. you know, and um, maybe we should do that so we can be a Yelp elite. Elite. <laughs> anyway, but uh, like I said, I recommend it. Definitely ch- check it out. And I think it's a, it's a annual yearly thing. Cause at the next event I met um, Brendan from Bungalower and I asked him about it. I think I asked him. It was Did he go? Him or something. He went. Uh, and I kind of asked, is this a yearly thing? And I think he said, yeah, it's like their one big event. Yelp's one big event here. Hmm. So anyway, so Hungry Pants, Media Night. I missed that one, too, because I was at work. Uh, you were missed. And, of course, Alex and Joey were sad that you couldn't come. But it was it was a lot of fun. Uh from episode 49, uh, you can go back and listen. We highly recommend that you do. Oh, go they're back just and a great pair. I mean, it's amazing to hear their story and their dream, and like now to see it come to fruition. Uh, you know, I'm so happy for them, and I can't wait to see it blossom. You know, I, I did go eventually, I did make it to uh, sample the restaurant, check it out, eat, but I did not go for the preview night. And the preview night, the preview night was really great. Um, uh, Rosie from uh, Rosie Roaming Orlando. Why can't I say that tonight? Sorry, Rosie. <laughs> so anyway, Rosie helped them uh, coordinate this evening, and she did a great job. She selected a great group of. And that's why mostly I'm bummed that I didn't get to go because it, like, from how you describe it, it just seemed like a cool, like a nice mix of people. Yes. Which makes all the difference when it comes to these kind of events. There was only one ratchet person that came. <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but she asked for her food to go. You don't come to a media night and then ask for your food to go. I'm sorry. I think the whole point of a media night is to sit, absorb, take in the whole everything. Like, look at the menu, look at all the details. That way, you know, you have things to say about it on your social platforms. But I hope if it was an emergency, I hope everyone's okay. Yes. Praise Jesus. (laughs) 
Amen. I bless you. <laughs> Just like you used to bless cars. And when we would pass a broken down car, you bless I always the car. do. Every time I pass a broken down car, I'm like, <laughs> bless them. May Jesus be with them. I hope they don't stay on the side of the road for too long. <laughs> <laughs> where's triple a okay but the the night was great the the people were great that they brought together and uh alex and joey handled it like pros uh so i ordered the um nudes bowl and that was good and the beats oh my gosh i don't i'm not really a beats fan but the these pictures beats looked really good. beautiful i mean the food looks so flavorful well, that's the thing about their bright. food like their food photographs really well it's very fresh and colorful and bright but then it also tastes good like those beets i'm not a fan of like beets what was mixed in with the beets oranges and oh. then a cashew t- topping maybe the the acid kind of it's just so good because you know, normally beets, beets taste beets different beets taste like dirt because they're like a root <laughs> plant, and normally they taste like dirt. I never ate beets. Well, that's <laughs> what they taste like. Like, if you think about eating dirt, like, you know, as a kid, you probably taste a little dirt. Well, that's what beets taste like. Uh, And then what else? Oh, the, um, the garlic aioli. So good. They have that on a platter that they, they, what they serve with uh, vegetables and shrimp. You need, we need to order that for you for sure. So when I went, we, we, we went, uh, together, uh, last week when they were having their soft opening and I had the turmeric noodle yeah, that's bowl. What I, that's what I had too. Sorry. It was the turmeric noodle bowl as well. The and I got, um, chicken on top of that. It was mm-hmm. good. Um, I didn't think it was going to be cold for some reason. Maybe that's my lack of food knowledge. I thought it was going to be like a hot pasta dish. Right. Noodles can be served cold or hot. And what I liked more was something that you ordered (laughs) that I wouldn't have ordered on my own, Mm -hmm. which was the cauliflower tots. Oh, the cauli tots. I would have not ordered those, but I tried them anyway because I am starting to like cauliflower as I try it more and more. But this didn't taste that much like cauliflower. It didn't taste like cauliflower. And the... um, batter on the outside is like super crispy and, and i dip. liked that sauce that it came with the chipotle dip was real good those were really good <coughs> and then that night for the preview night or the media night uh they served us both desserts um that they they gave us a choice between the two desserts but then when they came down to it at the end of the night everyone got the two desserts on their plate oh wow so How, that was nice of them Yes, it's a sour orange pie ice cream. Well, the okay. So it's a sour orange pie, and I had that, and the black, black bean, bean brownie. brownie, both very good. The sour orange pie is like an old Florida recipe from an old Florida cookbook, and uh, it's good. It kind of reminds me of like key lime pie a little bit, a little bit, but if the lime was replaced with orange. And then when we were there together, I had the ice cream. I tried the ice cream. Well, you didn't care for it because you don't like creamsicle, right? No, but that's exa- that is immediately what came to my mind. It tasted like a creamsicle. Yes, and it was so <laughs> good. And that's uh, uh, a collab they're doing with the Greenery Creamery. Correct. So Very good. Uh, I want to try. That's the first gr- uh, Greenery Creamery uh, flavor or ice cream that I've yeah, had. Yeah, me too. And I want to try more. And you had, what was it, a black... It was a black ash cone. <laughs> I wonder what that means. I don't know what's in it. <laughs> it was so. Did it clean you out? Uh, I don't did it cleanse your intestine? I don't tracks? know if that's what did it or something else. <laughs> 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 you know how we have been using black ash to like clean our teeth and clean our face, so maybe it's like for the intestine. Oh, but speaking of that. I know I'm getting a little too detailed, <laughs> but after I ate, let's just say after I ate all those beets, uh oh, <laughs> it was done. So red, no, it was oh red. red, oh man, <laughs> I've never eaten beets. I've never eaten anything that made my poop change colors. <laughs> Thank God. I guess that maybe means I'm not eating the right <laughs> foods. Oh, uh, so I really like the ice cream. That uh, that's sour orange ice cream. Mm, so and good. when we went, I had the lavender. What is it? Cream soda. Yes. Lavender cream soda. And it was good. It tasted like what you think a spa day looks like. Like imagine 
a like when you're sitting in a beautiful spa and the smell and the sound that's what it tastes like that's what it tastes like yes it has I like a weird like it tastes one way like when you put it in your mouth and then the lavender comes in and hits you at the end i love that i like that a and lot. i think next time i'll try the cucumber one yeah although i don't know i really don't like cucumber anything so probably i wouldn't like that well i can get it and you can well i still want to try it you can i can get it and then you can taste it okay um they also have a great they have a lot of like sharing platters and the sharing platter with the hummus wasn't at um my location in the media night so i i only had like i went to another table and we stole it from another <laughs> table <laughs> before somebody sat at that table we quickly like di- you know got a pita and dipped in it so uh it was good what i had but i didn't get to try the whole uh the whole platter uh but that garlic, the platter with the garlic aioli, potatoes, uh, greens. And there were sh- like eggs in there. Th- well, those eggs tasted so good. Well, was that a deviled egg? Because it's, the middle part looks like a, a little boiled, bit too yellow. It was like a boiled egg. It was so good. And that's another thing. Like, how is that egg so vibrant? How does it look so beautiful? Like, their food is just beautiful. It is. And it tastes good, too. And the place is cute. We didn't talk about what the place looks like. It's very cute. You know what I love is those pink floors. I didn't even notice the pink floors. Oh my gosh. The floors are pink. (laughs) Because I was looking at everything else. Um, It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. But small in a cute way. Like the way the seating arrangements are are good. You know, Mm -hmm. like there's like a, a nice bar seating. And then there's like smaller tables for like two and four. And then there's like tables for six against the wall yeah and it's cute so you should go try it out because they have they're having their full-blown hours now so they're open monday through saturday 11 to 9 30 and they're closed on sundays yes and then you want to keep an eye out uh for the brunch that they're going to be starting to do i guess in early 2020 yeah brunch i'm excited for brunch and you know i'm sure that um Eventually, they'll probably be open on Sundays too. Yeah. When they probably once they get once they make money started, yeah. <laughs> once they get you need a day money. of rest, you know. Right. When you're running the place, you need a day. Oh, to and to Joey relax. and Alex, if they're running the place, so when yes. you're in there, uh, stop in and say hey. Yeah. I'm sure you will see one of them. Yes, and if you go in and say hey, make sure you tell them Orlando out of context <laughs> sent you. Make sure you tell them Brian and Stephanie sent you. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So what was it? Two weeks. It was, it was about two weeks ago, a week and a half. It was 10 days. It was like a week ago. uh, 10 days ago. It was a little bit more than a week. It was 10 days ago. I um, was almost to work and the car check engine light came on. (sighs) The worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world and uh, made it into work fine. And so at the end of the day, I'm not going to go through that whole story. But Has that come on yet in your car? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, you the have time a, he has Prius. So I have a 2007 Prius. Priuses are much different with their issues as far as like a real, uh, like a, 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 a standard. standard car. Uh, the only time the other, the light came on was um, about two years ago now. And I was down in Miami. Ugh. <laughs> I got stuck in Miami. <laughs> For like a night, but the people at one of the Toyota dealerships down there took care, good care of me. Good. But it was a hybrid issue. It wasn't the hybrid battery, but it was another hybrid issue. So anyway, if you drive an old Prius, you're always kind of wondering, when is my hybrid battery going to go out? Because they only last a certain amount of time. And some last to 200,000 miles. Some maybe last a little bit more than that. But they say between 150,000 and 200 is when it goes out. And I'm at like 196. Yeah. That's so spot. that's what it was. And that's kind of what I felt like it was. And it happened on a Friday. And then I had a work event on Saturday. A lot of places are closed in terms of service on Sunday. So I just said, F it. I'm just going to like ignore it for the weekend, kind of. And so I borrowed a friend's car for the weekend, which I was really grateful to borrow. It was her smart car. I drove around <laughs> Chloe's smart car. I didn't tell you this. You've been in the 
smart car? Yes. You know, oh listen, driving God. that smart car. You didn't tell me that. I didn't. <laughs> we didn't see each other. Didn't come pick me up so we could take a ride. I never been in a smart car. <laughs> really? Oh well, I can get pick it up another time. We can take a I drive. I want to take a ride. <laughs> so it was so funny. Even like the two days that I drove that, I got so many looks. Like I was like, people, smart cars have been around in the U.S. for like years, and you you act like you just. I think saw I look it. at people because I just look at people and be like, really, you bought that little piece of shit, really? Uh, I don't okay, think it's I, a piece of shit because it's like, in my mind, I'm like, I know they're not, they're not so cheap to the point where I'm like, I understand not everyone can afford a full blown car. It's not that cheap, so I know. You chose that for a reason other than budget reasons. <laughs> and I need to know why. Well, economical. It's lighter on the it gas. It holds two human beings. That's it. Yeah, but sometimes wouldn't that be nice? Oh, yeah. Because I, rem- I used to hate, like, driving people around. Like, when I had my Beetle, <laughs> I used to- people used to always want to ride with me. And I'm like, I wish I had a two-seater. <laughs> <laughs> this is back in my younger days though uh don't worry about that mu- as much anymore but anyway so i drove around the smart car for two days so anyway i i just like put it to the back of my brain during the weekend and i tried to forget the fact that i thought my hybrid battery was out and so monday morning got to work i did a google search of like hybrid mechanics and this place called a uh, hybrid battery 911 popped up and I was like, let me check this out. That sounds jank right off the bat. I know. It does sound a little jank. But anyway, so I had done some research and I already had this feeling that it was my hybrid battery. So hybrid battery replacement at like a mechanic is generally 2500 around there, say. If you take it to the dealer, it's five grand. And that's like, you don't want to spend that kind of money. No. So I found this place and they For that were, money, you might as well buy a new car. Right. So so for hybrid battery 911, uh they charge $1000 and they'll come to your home or your work or wherever your car is and and they will replace the battery. So I called them. I think they they are owned out of Georgia. It's a Georgia company, but they have techs in different states, not every state, but different states. He was so nice on the phone, walked me through what would happen. And he set me up with an appointment that afternoon with one of the techs. You sent me a picture of the man that was installing it. And I was like, oh, can you send him over to my house when he's done? Because he was a hottie with a body. So Frank, the tech here locally, came out to my I thought that was your friend from work. No. The one. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. No, no. That's not Ryan. Uh, Anyway, so Frank came out and... uh, he test he plugged in the little computer thing you know how they read the, yeah, what's yeah. happening on the car computer and he's like yeah it's your hybrid battery and he said do you want me to replace and i was like yes <laughs> please <laughs> so he replaced in like 45 minutes he replaced it i paid my thousand dollars i got signed up for the warranty which the warranty is eight years um i do pay uh twenty dollars a month for the warranty but i'm like can you cancel it well, anytime yeah you can cancel it in case the you get rid of the car or anything, you know? Yeah, but but the nice thing about this, and this is really for you hybrid people out there, or if you're thinking about buying a used hybrid, there's resources out there that you don't have to spend that crazy amount of money. But this, I can transfer the warranty. If I sell it, the warranty can transfer to the next owner. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, so it's a great selling point oh, if yeah. I'm trying to sell my car and there's a warranty attached to it now for sure for the hybrid battery at least that's awesome so in eight years if he plugs the computer in and says again that a, a battery is needed they'll replace it for free yeah oh perfect yeah that's nice holler, holler. so i say this because it's great to find and you know I, I wasn't wanting to it's i think maybe it's a little bit still too soon to talk about it because it hasn't been a, even a month yet i kind of want to yeah. let things but you said already you feel a difference in the power of your car yes i feel like my battery was very low for most of the time i've had it i bought this car right after i moved back from brazil here because i need to buy a car all cash because i i didn't have a job when i came yeah. back so i didn't have any statements to get financing and all that stuff um i think most of my the life of this car the battery wasn't it, it was it was declining too bad they don't have a way to read the voltage like you know like a like an 
a standard car battery, you can plug a meter in and it'll tell you like this, yeah. ba- this battery is at a hundred percent or yeah. it's at 50, 20. And that way you kind of gauge like, Oh, I should probably replace it soon. Yeah. I don't know how you would tell that if there's a way you can tell that, but I'm thankful for this company so far, so far, so, so good because I didn't have to spend $2,500. Well, thanks Frank. Thanks Frank. And thanks. I forget the guy who I talked to. And if you can want to come, Replace my battery, you can. Well, all you have to do is go to the Jiffy Loop or no, uh, the uh, Auto Zone. Well, I wasn't talking about my car. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So while all this was going on, I this is why I didn't really know about a lot of what was going on during your week because Christy was here, and it was Halloween season, and it was Halloween week. So, you know, every year I take Halloween week off the whole week. And I do Hanson at Epcot, Eat to the Beat, all three days. This was their 10th year participating in This was Hanson's 10th year Yes. They told me, they said that during the concert, and I was like, really? Has it been And then that I, long? I went back, I checked the receipts online, and it hasn't <laughs> she been She checked that the receipts. I checked the receipts. <laughs> so for five years, they did two days, and then for the last five years, they've done three days. Okay. And I've got I've been every single day to every single show. For all show. 10 years. I didn't realize it had been that long. I didn't think it had been that long either. I was like, "Holy shit. Where's time going?" <laughs> it was a lot. Um but you know, if you have an annual pass, this is the most awesome season to be going to Epcot cuz mm-hmm. they're having a lot of good concerts. Uh tomorrow I'm going to see Boys to Men. They'll it already be done by the time this podcast comes out, but um and then november 12th through 14th joy fatone and friends is coming (laughs) featuring chris kirkpatrick and ryan cabrera (laughs) and i'm pretty pumped about this because this has my teenage years written all over it Uh, yeah i might have to step out for that one and and like go and see it oh okay you'll come step out of the house (laughs) for it (laughs) well joy fatone you should be blessed that brian would be willing to step out for you You know, I really, really, you know, we've been trying to get Joey Fatone's attention for a while because he's like our dream. Well, he's my dream guest to have on the podcast because he is like Mr. Orlando. Well, like Mr. Worldwide. He is like Pitbull for Orlando. So if you have any pull with Joey. And uh, I keep thinking, I've been thinking like he's going to be here during this time. I wish we could get him in here to to record i got a verbal yes from him in a live that he did on instagram on instagram he said he would if he was here in orlando but he never answered my freaking email he never answered my freaking dm so well if anyone out there knows joy fatone just keep at him november 12th through 14th and listen if you run into him or something and I'm not there. You just pull out your phone, hit the record button, and you just do an impromptu interview right there, and we can put it on the podcast. <laughs> okay? I'll do whatever I have to do. <laughs> but especially if he's with friends, you know? <laughs> that could be fun. <laughs> well, that's all you have to say about Hanson? Yeah, that's it. I mean, we had a great time. Oh! 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 I forgot. When Christy got here, we carved pumpkins. Yeah. And Hanson released a <laughs> pumpkin, a Hanson symbol pumpkin Tim pattern. Print. Okay. So we printed it out. I carved my pumpkin. I took a picture of me and Christy's pumpkin. And Hanson reposted it to their page. That's amazing. That's amazing. They Just- saw it with their eyes. They loved it. And I have to say, I don't want to shit on bitches, but my pumpkin was one of the best. Because I'm looking at all the other, they asked you to hashtag it, Hanson Pumpkin. Mm-hmm. So I go look at the hashtag and I'm wondering if all these other girls printed out the same pattern that I did. Because some of these pumpkins look like shit. Like well, you carved it with a butter knife <laughs> or maybe you printed out a crooked pattern or I don't know what was going on. Well, Arlene, our friend in Brazil, she got she got a featured repost too. too be- and I have to give credit to her. It was her first pumpkin. Her and a couple of her friends, uh, all Hanson fans, they get together and they have little groups where they do Hanson events and they <laughs> celebrate things. And celebrate Hanson. Hey, don't you laugh. <laughs> Hanson is worth celebrating. <laughs> but, you know, Hanson doesn't 
for for whatever reason, it's not of their choice. I don't think. I think there's issues with scheduling and travel and booking venues there and things out of their control, as they always say. To go to Brazil. To go to Brazil, so they don't get as much handsome time as I do. So you know, it's they okay have, for they them have to, to do come things together. Like this. Yes. Yeah. But um, these girls got together, they carved one pumpkin together, and they did an awesome job because they didn't have any carving tools. They were using, like, vegetable knives, and they did a much better job than everyone else that posted their pumpkin. I don't know what they were doing, (laughs) what they were using, if they were missing their vision while they were carving. I don't know what was going on, but they all sucked. Well, you did a very good job. You're so good at it. I know. (laughs) I'm not, you know, I don't really, I like to carve pumpkins, but I'm not usually very good at it. But if I'm carving a, you can't freaking fail if you're carving a pattern. A template, yeah. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> oh. But yeah, we had a good time. We also went to, I know we we had to um, do the Halloween episode kind of early because of our schedule, all the scheduling between us and Debbie and just try we were trying to do all the events before we recorded but we didn't get a chance but um brian christie and i went to scream again on halloween night Mm -hmm. and it was awesome it was better than last year they had the same houses but the internals were a lot better they beefed it up it was great we had a good time uh, what else did we do? You did something else. We went. That we uh, didn't talk me about on the Halloween episode, I think. Me, Debbie, and Brian went to Dark Horizons. Yes, and you Nick, went to Dark Horizons. We, uh, that was over here across from the Marriott. What is that? World Center. World Center. It was awesome. It was great. We used a coupon code. I think they were kind of a little bit uh, dead pretty much the whole season because I kept seeing them release coupon codes like every single day. It was in a bad location. It was in a very bad location. Uh, And not necessarily a bad location, but just the whole operation because I dropped them off that night. It was just kind of a janky operation in terms of the drop off and there was no signage on the road. Yeah. There were some billboards like on the The only way you would have found out was if you saw it on on, um, Instagram. Yeah, there was there's there was billboards on I four like I think they I saw a billboard over by Universal like probably trying to grab that Horror Nights crowd and let the Horror Nights crowd know that uh, the Dark Horizons was in town. But Dark Horizons is uh, I think California based. Come on, guys, you guys got you guys gotta find a, a different spot. And I could I I kind of got the vibe that I I mean I don't want to give it a hundred percent yes, but that whoever is running their social media is running it from somewhere not here. Right. Because they were posting a lot of um, stock photos mm-hmm. of the performers and there was not much coverage of the actual events and the actual people that were visiting. You know what would be a good idea is to like, and maybe they did this and we didn't see this, but once again, they must have not because they could have used it on social media. But you know how like Ellen sends her people in yeah. like with a slip. You could do that with Orlando celebrities, like send them in, film them being going through the experience and then you know, it sh- it sh- appears on their show or something, yeah, and then yeah. you take that and you put it on your social media. Who do you think would be an Orlando celebrity? I don't know. So one of the newscasters. I, I don't know any. Buddy Dyer. Buddy Dyer. Di- mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, you could send the bungalower in. Yeah. That would be hilarious to send Brendan in. Uh, which shout out to Brendan because People I didn't. With big I met Brendan in Orlando. But yeah, like Brendan would be hilarious to send in. <laughs> like really. It'd be hilarious to send him in. But, you know, like, do some stuff like that. To kind of grab your to, audience. Yeah. We'll see. I hope maybe it'll come back next year. We'll see how it, how it goes. This is our first year, so. Let's see if they come back. Only, only one place to go is up. <laughs> or down, or I down. guess. Or <laughs> down. But um, I had a little fun uh, fact to talk about. So back in episode four, uh, we talked about my visit to the doctor. I had a consultation to get a breast enlargement, which I've had my mind set on forever. And, you know, I, I plan to do it this January and I already had like the time off of work and everything, like everything was set. But then Brian mentioned to me that, uh, who on your podcast? Um, Michelle, Michelle Visage on RuPaul, uh, uh, RuPaul's podcast. So she was talking about her experience with breast implant illness which is basically something that is bigger than I ever thought about. I didn't even know this existed. And it's when like your body attacks 
um, the implant and g- gives you like an autoimmune disease mm-hmm. and it can cause like a laundry list of terrible things mm. like hair loss, um, sickness, like, um, anemia. She had to change joint. Mich- Michelle pain. had to ch- had to change her whole diet. Yeah. Joint pain. Um, you know, just everything, like a lot of things that affect your everyday life. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite, uh, makeup bloggers, on youtube she's been kind of like absent for a while and i was wondering like i wonder what's going on with her because she's never like that and then all of a sudden on instagram i won't put her on blast because it's her health information but then on instagram she puts oh hey guys sorry i've been away but i had to have emergency explant surgery um i had to get my implants removed because i was having you know terrible terrible things happening to me and you know she was one that never even spoke about implants so i didn't even know she had implants Mm -hmm. because she has actually still has a very small chest but she was saying that she had addressed that in some of the comments you know somebody was like i didn't know you even had them because your pimps are still very small right and she was like well actually you know i had a like a freaking bored flat chest and i just got like a just little, enough a small implant just to so fill that clothes. I could fi- yeah, fill clothes out. Exactly. And um, so she posted that she has documented everything and she's going to be doing a two-part YouTube, two-part segment on her channel um, about her experience with um, the breast implant illness. So, you know, I've decided that I that I'm not going to go forward with it. That was your like in the line. You were, you were kind of like, since I told you about it, you were kind of, you know, not sure. And Michelle Visage is uh, doing a documentary, which I don't know when that comes out, but I know you've been asking, Oh, is that, is that, yeah, we'll have to look at and and see if uh, what the status of that is. But, uh, that was the uh, final straw. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of weird. I, even before, like maybe a couple days or a week before you told me about that, I watched this documentary on YouTube or on um, Netflix, and it it's very similar. But instead of breast plants, it's about how your um, when you get root canals, mm-hmm. um, it kind of gives you the same thing. So when you get a root canal, they hollow out the middle of your tooth. They take all the root and then they fill it with, you know, some unknown substance. Right. It gets capped. So essentially, it's like this dead thing that stays in your mouth. Right. It's a foreign object. It's a in your foreign body. object that that remains in your mouth, and your body starts to attack it. It creates excessive white blood cells, and you get all the same symptoms. You get chronic fatigue. You get joint pain. You get hair thinning and loss, weight gain. All of the things. All from that little. F- everything that I have like on a normal basis for the last five, like four to five years of my life, it seems. And, uh, you know, it just got my brain like thinking about it. And then I, you know, you told me about that and I was like, well, fuck, I can't (laughs) like, I already have all these problems already. And I, you know, my health is just not where I want it to be. And I just don't want to deal with that because explant surgery is like a whole different thing in itself. It's like a whole, you have to get a special doctor and it's a special procedure because everything has to be removed or you're not going to get that relief. Right. And these women that are telling their stories basically say from the minute they wake up from their explant surgeries that they already feel like 70% better of all the things they've been suffering from. Right. And Michelle said that, from what I've heard from Michelle, is that you might not see the effects of the implant right away. It yeah. It might be years down the it line. It could be years down the line. Yeah. And then even, uh, like you say, yeah, they f- sometimes they feel 70% better, but there's still a healing process oh, yeah. that takes yeah. place. And, um, you know, another thing to highlight is you have to go to someone who really understands the explant process yes. because there's like um, the lining the capsule, uh, the capsule that grows around the implant properly taken out. Yes. So it's a whole like the whole process of getting it taken out is just intense. And I've only saved money for the surgery. I haven't saved money for the like the explant is more than actually the implants. Yeah. So, so I'm really sad about it because, you know, in my mind, it was just something I've really wanted for a really long time as far as my. As far as my self-esteem goes, it's just something I've always wanted. Like, I've just never felt like a true woman, you know, because when you can't fill out a simple shirt Mm -hmm. and, you you know, you go out with your friends to a club or something and you want to feel sexy, 
there's just nothing I can wear to look sexy. Because, I mean, every shirt, I don't have any cleavage at all. So oh. <laughs> it just kind of sucks. And it's like now I have to kind of like deal with that and cope with that and kind of get into new, a new it's mindset. Like kind of, it's like losing something, even though you didn't have yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like losing, losing something. something that I already in my mind like promised myself like i already saw myself like living my well best life at least tits. you know you're not gonna have botched surgery true <laughs> true <laughs> so you know that's it's just something i wanted to put out there into the universe because i don't think it's it's now that i know about it and i have researched it it's huge yeah. there's a lot of women that this has happened to uh crystal hefner uh hef hugh hefner's wife she got Did hers she have it? yeah she got hers taken out i think a year or two ago um, and it, it, the, what the thing is, is like nobody's talking about it because doctors don't want anyone to know about it right. because they s- they want to sell you the tits still. Right. So it's just this thing that like no I, one's knowing and about. I, and I would have to say, you know, Michelle says I'm not against it. Some women don't see the effects. Yeah. But I have to say that when you put a foreign object in your body in the way that that is. I mean, there has to be effects. Yeah. You, you small or big? There's small or big. There's effects. So, another uh, another thing that I I watched botched a lot too on E, and this happens a lot, and it's called contrap uh, con con contracture capsule capsule contracture. So basically, it's where like your body just like makes this big scar tissue around the implant Mm -hmm. and then it becomes rock hard Mm -hmm. in your skin Mm -hmm. and you immediately have to get it taken out because it like it's like basically carrying around two huge rocks in your chest and it like impedes your breathing and things like that so and that's something that happens immediately Hmm. that's something that will happen like within the first few weeks and um you see a lot of women get that too that's crazy and you know when i went to my consultation I asked my doctor about that, and he glazed over it very fast. Of course he did. Very quick. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) So, RIP to the tits that I never had. Well, um, I'm glad you're going through the healing process of that. That's what going through all the stages of grief. But I agree. I think that I think that it is important to talk about it, and uh, it's something that's not spoken about. Yeah. And it's. It's an easy fix because you just need to, the people need to talk about it and then you just don't do it. Or you, you know, you make the decisions best for you. Yeah, exactly. Whatever that may be. So let's talk, you, you know what? You had a pretty busy uh, Halloween season, actually. I did. I had an awesome Halloween season. It was a good season. It was really good. I did all the things that I wanted to do. Cocktails, eh. and, cocktails and Screams is now I open. Did, I did not do um, the, f- the, uh, in Ultima, the forest. I didn't get to do the Petrified okay. Forest, but it's okay. I, I did Halloween Horror Nights about five nights. We did Cocktails and Screams twice. I wanted to do it more, but man, the, doing Disney in the freaking heat. It was so freaking hot that week. But the nice thing about Christ, cocktail- it was like 90 degrees The every nice day. thing about Cocktails and Screams is it's going to be there. It's not yeah. closing down. It's gonna But the week of Halloween, they had a bunch of um, theme nights. Right. And Dev and I went to Devi, our friend Devi, not Debbie, Devi. <laughs> uh, we went to the zombie theme night, but uh, people weren't really dressed as zombies. So right. that's why I wasn't kind of compelled to really like participate in the other nights. Because well, I enjoyed my time there. Because everybody was wearing whatever costume they wanted to wear. I enjoyed my time there on a Tuesday night <laughs> and was in home, uh, still at home <laughs> uh, in bed by 11 or Even after the I-4 shenanigans. Yeah, b- because it was just chill. But I, I bring back up Halloween because the your final Halloween activity, our final Halloween activity was... Uh, Orlando Ballet's Vampire Ball. Yes, at the Dr. Phillips Walt Disney Theater. Yeah, and you got a coupe for it? I got a BOGO, and uh, we had awesome seats. Ugh. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say awesome, like awesome for us. Like, well, we didn't have anyone around us. Seats. We were in the back. Like, nobody was bothering I us. I asked Stephanie on the way there. I was like, we're in the back. <laughs> I want to. I kind of want to call Mary at, at, at Winter Garden Theater or <laughs> Garden Theater the and just seat. tell her, Mary, just change all of our tickets to the back seat, please. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, anyway, uh, but if you've never been to the Walt Disney Theater at the Dr. Phillips uh, Center for the Performing Arts, 
I have been there. This is my second time in there. And before I had been, when it first opened, people were telling me, oh, there's no bad seat in the house. Well, I think that that's actually the case. I don't think that there's a bad seat in the house because... The way it's angled up. Oh, it's great. Nobody and we were, will ever we be were, in front of you. We were orchestra in the very back of the orchestra, and it was great seats. Because, you know, like growing up when we we when we did uh, uh went to shows like that in our uh big performing arts center in Sacramento there wasn't that much of a there's always a someone's grade. big hair in front yeah, of you yeah there you couldn't really see properly the the stage if you were in the back for orchestra but not at the Walt Disney Theater so what was your favorite part of the vampire ball um i think i probably liked well, I like the special effects that they used, like the the digital effects and the scenery changes. Yeah. I liked all that um, because it added something, um, but it had it has to kind of be minimal for ballet yeah. because they have to keep the stage Clear. open. But it was very, um, it was it puts you into the the story. I think my favorite was the, I like the zombie. Yeah, that was my favorite. The zombie dance, and the the last act was probably my favorite. When they were all at the party. Yeah, they when they were like at the ball. Doing their little... Yeah. You know when you're at a party and you get in like They were kind of like doing dance battle. And everyone does a dance battle, yeah. Yeah, it was like a dance battle at the end. Um, <coughs> I, I liked it. And I, I liked the ballet. Um, and I, this is a, the second Orlando ballet production that we've been to. The first one was uh, for... Fall, um, let's val- fall in love. The Valentine's Day type of theme. At the Garden Theater. The Garden Theater. And I guess it's interesting to they can perform a, on a, such a small stage as Garden Theater, and, and such then a big such a big stage uh, as the um, Walt Disney Theater. I love the ballet. I've always loved the ballet. I would much rather watch a ballet than any any show where they're going to talk dialogue. I just love to watch people dance. I li- I like the ballet too, and I definitely uh, want to go back. Um, We're hoping to go for Nutcracker. Yes. So they're going to be having Nutcracker uh, in the same theater, um, December 13th through December 23rd. It said tickets starting at $24. What I When I was looking, I didn't see any $24 tickets. Hmm. That may be the matinee, though. I didn't yeah, look at any matinee mat- shows. Probably the matinee. Um, but I'm hoping we'll be able to go see the Nutcracker because I, I especially like t- seeing ballet when it's music that I'm very familiar, familiar. with. Yeah, and Nutcracker. So. There were some um, tunes that I knew in the Vampire Ball, yes. like um, the very beginning one, the classic Halloween organ music, and there was some Thriller. There was some Danny Elfman. There was Adele. They d- they danced to an Adele song. They did. Yeah, I don't know Adele very well. I yeah. l- I liked it a lot. I thought it was good, and I think that that theater is uh, is beautiful. It's gorgeous. So. We have another show coming up. Yes, we have A Christmas Carol. At uh, the Garden Theater. Yes, at the Garden Theater. Um, this show runs from uh, November 22nd through December 22nd. It's a pretty, pretty long. That's yeah, like pretty their long longest run. run. Yeah. This is probably my favorite Christmas uh, story, um, A Christmas Carol. I've seen it on stage before and, of course, seen different adaptations of it. Uh, for film and um, this is one of my favorites so I am looking forward to A Christmas Carol and this is going to be the first time you've seen it all the way through the whole story all the way through right yeah I think the only one I've seen is <laughs> you know the one where Mickey Mouse does it yeah and it's like the he's got he we do her his little mm-hmm. nephews I love that Scrooge version McDuck that's the only version <laughs> I've seen that's a good version that's a good one I love that version but I own that version <coughs> If you want to get tickets, you can always use our code at... Please do. O-O-O-C-1920. You got it. <laughs> so you can go to uh, gardentheater.org um, and type in the code there, or you can call the box office and let them know about uh, the promo code, and you'll get 15% off of your tickets. And it's running for a while, so make sure you grab your tickets. Remember, it's November 22nd through uh, December 22nd. I'm trying to think. Uh, last year, we went to our very first uh, Garden Theater show during mm-hmm. the holidays, 
And it was the same night as the light up night there. Yeah. So if you can figure out when the light up night is, that's a nice night to go because they had the street full of vendors. Santa Claus was there. Um, they had food. And uh, it was just nice because we took a little walk up the street and then um, had some food. And then we sat for the show. So um, that's definitely something to look out for. So uh, the th- I just looked it up. So the 32nd annual Light Up Winter Garden um, is Friday, December 6th. Um, and it uh, is from 6 to 9 p.m. The ceremony starts at 6. The street lighting is at 6.15. So you can go and see the ceremony um, before the show because the show generally, I think, starts at 7.30. So uh, remember that that is uh, December 6th. And for that evening, it's uh, pretty busy. So what I would do is I would probably get there maybe a five have dinner somewhere. You're going to grab a spot in the parking garage behind Garden Theater. Grab yeah. a spot go have dinner somewhere, go to the lighting ceremony, walk around a little bit, and then it'll be time for your show. Beautiful date night. We It's all planned and so ready for festive. you. You're welcome. <laughs> and then uh, they're also running, uh, so Garden Theater sometimes does like movies, like older movies, and they're doing Home Alone 2 Lost in New York on December 15th at 7.30, and the tickets for that are $15. If you want to have a blast from the past. I love Home Alone. I prefer the classic Home Alone, but. I mean, that's a classic Home Alone. Home Alone 2? I mean, it's still I don't think classic because you know they've had like Home Alone 3. Oh, yeah. I don't know, maybe 4 too. But uh, it's still Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> I like both Home Alone uh, 1 and 2. But uh, yeah, this is th- that would be fun. They do check uh, check their website too. They do all kinds. Of, they did Rocky Horror for Halloween, and I think they're doing Mary Poppins. Possibly, don't quote me on that. Uh, a, a few cute other ones. Yeah, they do like I don't know one every ever every other month or so. Yeah, that's a it's a great tip, especially if you live over in Winter Garden and you can um, get over there real quick. Well, that was a long ass episode. <laughs> Because it's, uh, I'm at the, uh, well, we, I recorded, started recording a little bit before we started, but we're, we're like on almost an hour. Good. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Remember guys, the voicemail, Orlando Out of Context voicemail, it's 407-603-6994. Talk about whatever you want. Ask us a question, give a pro tip. Cuss us out, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> just do something yeah give us a call for christ's sake we're we're here and ready to take your calls uh and you'd be featured on one of our upcoming episodes yeah perfect all right guys well until next time bye, bye. follow us on instagram at orlando out of context Instagram is where you can connect and interact with us as well as see photos and videos related to this week's episode. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and iHeartRadio.